came across a Twitter thread that I found to be really interesting. And it's of an LGBT student who is the valedictorian or the class president of his school who's supposed to give a speech at his graduation uh, ceremony the way that is pretty standard and that he's talking about how the don't say gay bill or as it is appropriately known the parents rights and education bill in Florida is infringing on his rights and how that he was instructed by his administration of the school that he is not to make a political statement that he is not to um, talk about candidates or uh, things of that nature in his speech or the bill or anything along that line. And that if he does, there is a secret signal that the administrators are going to give to cut his mic and to end the speech. And he's the, the basic story is that this is an anecdotal attempt uh, or to justify the claim that this is about oppressing LGBT individuals and their expression and their rights in our culture. Here's the problem. What I think that a lot of this has done actually is that it's beginning to expose those in the LGBT, perhaps just as a kind of microcosm, to the experience that Christians have had for literally decades. And what I mean by that is, it might not shock some of you to think I've never been a class president and I've never been a valedictorian. I was not a very good student when I was in high school. But um, I did have smart friends. And so a couple of them actually did actually uh, reach that kind of rank in the school graduating class. And so they would be writing their speeches and reviewing them and they would ask us to review them while they were going over their notes during lunch and things. And part of it is that they would issue, the administration would issue to these students specific things, guidelines on what they are and are not allowed to say. And it shouldn't shock most of you to think that I did know people that were Christians in high school, the good kind, not the kind that I was, but the good kinds. And what they would review these guidelines of that they're not allowed to say Jesus's name, even. They are not allowed to make claims about faith. They can make general allusions to how faith has been a comfort to them. They can make general allusions to the, um, the need to live rightly and do good things and to find comfort in spirituality. General things of like that. Uh, affirmations. But not to make any specific denominational or strictly religious claims at any time during the speech. And that if they did, that very same thing would happen. There was a secret signal or whatever, and that the administration would cut the mic and end the speech. This has been conventional, um, let's say, school or administrative behavior for a very long time. And that it also included things like sexuality. Obviously, you couldn't make drug or sex references or like if you got pregnant in high school and yet still managed to be a valedictorian, you couldn't take your baby up with you and see uh, anything of that nature because the school administrators have an agenda of the kind of life they want to project their students of having had. So if you were an athlete, having your letterman jacket would be fine over your uh, cap and gown, but don't you dare try to suggest that you were banging a cheerleader underneath the bleachers at any point. Like, that sort of a thing. Like, a very carefully curated perception of their students. And that this has bled over into various other conditions as well. Like, I was at the National Day of Prayer um, event that was he held here in the Vigo County uh civic center what do you call it city hall and during it they had an open mic where people could pray in their own ways over the event and they were instructed don't make any speeches 
do not preach or teach, and do not uh, attempt to endorse or denounce any political parties, political agendas, or political uh, candidates at any time. And that if you did, that they would do the same thing, that they would cut the person off, because that's not the essence, that's not the intention of the event. And for the most part, as far as I have seen, Christian students that I'm aware of, going all the way back to like when I was in high school through as being a youth pastor, youth leader, intern, all the things that I've done, for the most part, they've been respectful, respectful and observed those rules very carefully. But there have been outliers. For instance, there's this one student that I had a few years ago. He graduated as a senior, and he went through a pretty remarkable salvation journey over almost little more than a year. Went from being uh, very angry and aggressive to being very... Um, what do you, you, people might say on fire for Jesus and went from not like wanting to be a bodybuilder and a model to being, uh, to enrolling in seminary, like a very significant change in behavior and priorities. And that they asked him because of this dynamic change, he went from an F student to an A student and they went like, they wanted him to give fellowship and Christian athletes um, graduation ceremony thing. So this is a Christian event. And they he was going to give his testimony to this. And he talked about how that he struggled with porn in his first draft and stuff like that. And they made him rewrite it because they didn't want those kind of allusions or content in the speech. And so he did rewrite it according to their guidelines. They accepted the second or the follow-up draft. And he went up to give the speech. Well, the thing is, he kept his original rough draft and he gave that anyways. And because it was open air, there was no microphone. They couldn't stop him. He did it anyway. And he, as a result, he ended up being disciplined by not only the FCA, but he was also disciplined by the school administration for it. So it's something that, getting back to kind of the thesis of what I was saying, of that it shows something of... It, the LGBT students are beginning to experience, on the one hand, access to certain life events, like um, the ability to give a valedictorian speech. I don't know how often that's happened before for LGBT students, but as a result of them being initiated into those experiences, they're beginning to see kind of behind the veil of the kinds of experiences Christians have had curating their freedoms of speech as well for literally decades. They're beginning to realize that Christians haven't had the freedoms to be able to say the things that whatever they want the way they believe Christians have had the ability to say. And now they're upset about that. Whereas they would have celebrated the limited uh, or the limitations put on those Christian students not being able to push their faith on others, now they're, let's say, um, kicking against the goads about it when it's restraining their ability to try and stump about their agendas. So it's interesting to me that this is kind of where we're at. I think that they're beginning to experience a different kind of world than they thought they lived in.